Welcome back. I've been working out what I'm going to do for my own alt army, so time to share my research. Okay, tip number one. Before you do anything, log in to each of your alts if you have not already. You need to log into a character once a new level cap has been implemented in order for that character to actually start accruing rested XP. So no matter what, do that for all of your alts. And now that you've got your first tip, Hello, I'm going to pass on all that I know about getting an alt army leveled up in a decently time efficient way. Do it all right, and you know what? You should be able to get a new character from 60 to 70 in under three hours. Hell, potentially under two. Now, let's pay the bills with today's sponsor. Us and our newly revamped Patreon loot, which for the first time ever has got a journal. Yeah, we actually have a, uh, we have a custom notebook for this month, which I'm super, super hype about. And um, we've actually also revamped quite a lot of what we're doing with the loot. Um, so in addition to the notebook, you'll also get this beautiful lantern pin. I, uh, I cannot wait to get these in. They look so goddamn awesome. So the lantern pin and some really, really cool art that is part of a special project. But yes, quite a lot of new things and uh, they will be, yeah, they'll be on our Patreon. So if you subscribe on our loot tier through the end of this month, you will get that in addition to a bunch of other uh, goodies too. You can check it out down below. Thanks for uh, supporting us. And let's get to the video. First, things to do in your main that will make your alt army more effective. Number one, hit renown level 10 with a faction to unlock a 100% rep boost for your alts up to renown level 10. Hit Renown level 20 in your main, and that boost is extended up to Renown level 20, and 1 through 10 are boosted by a mighty 200%. This will make your alt Renown go extremely quickly, especially as you blast your way through side quests and world quests. As your initial Renown levels will go quickly, you'll of course gain access to, you know, all those additional faction mechanics too. These will make a large difference to your weekly sources. The dungeon weeklies will now net you 500 to like 750 for a single rep. Aiding the Accord will net you 1000 to 1500 with every faction. Plus that's, uh, you know, the Aiding the Accord quest does require you to earn rep, which will be super easy to do if your alts are benefiting from the boost. But actually that's not all. Dragon Isle artifacts are bind on account. Um, Expedition and Maruk ones give 25 rep each. Um, I think it's slightly different for Ascara and the Accord, but basically they all have those artifacts. Of course, being able to send these over to your alts will be pretty handy in, you know, unlocking new crafting recipes, maybe some decent starter gear, that kind of thing. But that's not all that's bind on account. There's a nice thing here for PvP players who can earn medals of honor from the PvP strong boxes that they get when they win. These can be redeemed on any character for 250 honor, and that will allow you to gear up and upgrade gear on your new alt super fast. Another thing I could mention is the draft of the 10 lands that gives you a 10% XP boost. It costs service metals, which are a BFA patch 8.1 currency, but this, uh, this XP boost cannot be applied beyond level 50, so it's not humongously useful. And the final thing then, of course, is the dragon riding glyphs are account wide. So once your new alt is on the aisles, you will actually be able to fill out your talents. Beyond that then, let's talk about the best method for most people. Okay, adventure mode. Basically, this is unlocked if you've completed the campaign on your main character. With this, just do a tiny number of quests in the waking shores, then eventually you'll be led to Sandrax and you can then pick up the quest to go to the scouting map where you can select a zone to start in. World quests and bonus objectives will be active. You just have to go play the game. And remember, uh, rares actually grant a nice little boost of XP too. So having an add-on like Silver Dragon that makes it very obvious when there's a rare nearby would be quite useful here, especially since you're able to dragon ride pretty quick. Side quests are a little more spread out in Thaldrassus, but I think they're super well paced in Waking Shores or Naren Plains and the Azure Span, actually. I'd mostly say just stay clear of the gardening side quests, you know, the Ruby Life Bulls, because they are a bit slower XP per hour. But really, though, basic questing is just so damn efficient this time around that you can't go massively wrong just using Adventure Mode and then fully utilizing your first time craft bonuses. So you can gain XP from the first 30 times you do crafts. 
And doing this is simple. You just head to Valdraken. I would recommend picking up tailoring or leatherworking as uh, they are usually the cheapest. And basically just leveling them up through their vendor recipes. Material prices are dead cheap right now. You can just buy what you need from the auction house, which will be right beside you anyway. And while this was nerfed from initially you being able to get 60 first time crafting bonuses, let's be real, 30 is like still at least a level in barely any time. So it's a massively fast way to get XP. Now, in a way that's really it. I do have cool techniques to talk about soon though. But when you look at dungeons and when you look at battlegrounds right now, they are just coming out a bit slower. But there are some fun methods, so let's talk about them. The Cobalt Assembly has quickly became a popular leveling spot. It offers pretty damn great XP per hour. You can get a level every 20 to 30 minutes. Chances are this will probably be hotfixed. But anyway, to take advantage of it, you just go to the assembly and tag mobs. Now at level 60, you will not be strong enough to fight them. They will destroy you, uh, right? Uh, so you're either going to be left tagging mobs solo when other people are there, which is just slow, or just joining or forming a group, um, right? Obviously, it will be a group where there is no other character who is below level 60, so you're not, or below 70, so you're not getting, like, split XP. And, and that's really it. You can just tag a bunch of these dudes, try not to get killed, and you'll get loads of XP. And once you hit level 68, of course, you can then start the rep farm. So on the bright side, you'll probably hit level 70 with enough cobalt assembly reputation to buy that ring, which, uh, yeah, would be pretty nice. But again, there's a decent chance of this being hotfixed. Next, the fun idea of mob grinds aided by friendly NPCs. One of these is found in the Primalist Future instance that is unlocked during the Thaldrassus campaign. Basically, you can pull elites into the friendly resistance fighters and then... Once those uh, elites do their AoE, they will kind of like activate the resistance fighters. And then between the little dragon pet that you get and the, or that you just have when you're doing that quest and the resistance fighters, these elite mobs will die pretty damn quick. And actually they do give you quite a lot of experience. Now it can be a bit fiddly, of course, getting them to actually, you know, cast the AoE on top of the resistance fighter. But basically if you do this right, it can be quite comparable to the Cobalt Assembly method. But because you wouldn't be earning useful rep, I would probably do Cobalt Assembly first. Um, now, I believe it was Archvalder who brought this to the fore. Uh, again, he's long been a user of the principle of friendly NPCs and decently uh, spawning hostiles. Um, Right, it's a really fun uh, little element of how the game uh, works that he's been looking into. I've actually seen some similar reports of this with Tuscar NPCs and Elementals in the Waking Shore. Um, so cool stuff. I love the way the Archer Elder puts things uh, out into the world. Um, but honestly, though, when I think about what I would rather do, it's got to be the next one. So the great add-on called Azeroth Autopilot, uh, of course, wasn't really updated for this expansion. There's a little bit more work required because this is a guide that has been noted down on Reddit, but it really does just highlight how fast Dragonflight fundamentally is. This is Ace Versatile's 60 through 70 leveling run. He accomplished this in a extremely impressive one hour, 49 minutes. He actually hit level 61 in around five to 10 minutes by just killing the uh, the elite mobs in Revendreth near the Nathria uh, entrance, I believe. Uh, you can just mass kill those guys if you've got the gear and it will give you a bunch of rep. So you just get level 61 for free, basically. You'll obviously get another level for free by just doing the, um, doing your first time crafting bonuses and uh, then just going through his route. I mean, his results speak for themselves you can be level 70 with like under two hours slash played. His video will be linked by us. He's even created a fantastic uh, written walkthrough. It's one of those things I looked at this and I just thought, all right, I can't beat that. This is the time. Uh, now, obviously getting times like what he shows will take practice. So you're not going to be as quick, but I actually think that's in a way a good thing. I say this because speedrunning is a whole game in itself. 
So much so that this may be a way for you to gamify leveling a whole bunch of characters where otherwise it would be a chore. And certainly if you're doing it via just a straight mob grind, it really would be a chore. There are some useful add-ons that are used by speed levelers um, that just kind of like output the information. So you could look into that. Um, to be honest, this is what I'm going to be doing personally uh, for my characters. To put a little bit of color in this, way back when Blizzard uh, revamped the whole leveling system, I actually leveled like four characters on the public test realm. And they would just be deleted when the realm went down. But I leveled those characters up purely because testing speedrunning methods was really fun. So we can learn from the speedrunners. Not only will you be able to level your characters pretty damn quickly, but doing it in this way will get a whole bunch of side quests done, which if you followed the tenants from the start of this video, will lead to a whole bunch of renown in your new character, which will be great. And then in your next run on another character, a new class, you can try to beat your previous time. And because you've gamified it and you have like a fun little goal, you have a reason to try to beat your past self. Well, actually now it's not merely just repeated content. It's a challenge that you set up for yourself. And ultimately when I think about how to level up a whole bunch of characters, I want to think about a method that I can stick to, a method that I can find fun within. This certainly is that. And because something like this is just not really the kind of thing that could be hot fixed, I would view time spent being good at doing this leveling as a really strong investment that will stand to you for the rest of this expansion. So there you go. When it comes to getting alts up to snuff, I did all the research. This is what I found. It's what I'm going to be doing. I hope you have found this to be useful. And as a final little cherry on top, do remember that as your alt's leveling up, um, you know, there'll be loads of sparks of ingenuity available for that character because of how those unlock. Uh, you'll have a large Valor Point cap and Conquest cap as well. And if you're doing so after like late January, you'll have plenty of charges of the Inspiration Catalyst, which will allow you to get to your gear pretty damn quick. So versus other expansions, man, this is looking so much better. In Shadowlands, I, I did not do alts. This time, I'm going to do alts, and I think that really says everything. Okay, have fun. See you next time.